Yo, yo, peace. Just going to go through a little brief walkthrough of the master and chain on the hardware side. I'll do another video uh, discussing what we use on the uh, software side. Because we, you know, we do a high, it's, it's a hybrid setup. We use plugins too, um, along with the hardware. But you know, initially we come out of the wave lab, out of the wave lab, into the links, links helo, into the liaison, the different analog gears patched through the liaison. Hit the TC electronic, EQ station is in one, the 1951 master in EQ. Then we have the better maker master in EQ. And this is empty right now. Four and six is empty. Then five, we had a, the better maker limiter. Darth limiter. So yeah, so the first thing in the chain, like I said, is the EQ station, TC electronic. This is a eight, eight channel, eight channel, eight channel mono EQ. Pardon me, eight channel mono EQ. Or you can group the channels. Pardon, so group the channels and um. stereo channels I have four stereo channels see I got one and two group right now see that's three four five on every channel you got a parametric EQ dynamic EQ and a, uh, a graphic EQ and a dynamic EQ that's how you turn each each module on so you had these three modules in every channel so that's how you go to each module It's a parametric dynamic EQ. And now it's a three band dynamic EQ. So that's two band, basically two band and three band. So this is on every channel. So I can actually group three or four and have all those, these modules on two separate analogs. So there's eight analog ins and outs on the back of that. So you can have each channel. So if you wanted to use it for multi-tracks, like I said, mono or group, you could group group a couple, use uh, group four of them, have the other four mono, something like that, uh, if you wanted to. You know, and then there's a, a actual, uh, the ability to link multiple units. Yeah, so next is in the chain number two was the 1951. The Tegla gets used in the mixing phase, not the master. So does the Zulu. Been waiting patiently for the Zulu R, the rack mount version to come out. I love the Zulu, but this is a mixing, this is on my mix bus. This stay on my mix bus. I mix into that, into the Zulu. But back to the chain. The master and chain. This is number two, 1951 master and EQ. All tube, passive. It's a nice unit. Got box tone just from running through it. If everything is flat, you get you get you get a you get a sound just from running through it, just from going through the circuitry. This is a nice unit. It's custom, custom made in France. Then the next in line is the Better Maker Master and EQ, which is also passive EQ, but it's not too, it's clean. So between these two EQs, I'm sad, pretty, pretty satisfied with the, with the results we're getting from that. So we're pretty covered on the EQ side. So after that is the Darth Limiter right there. So we'll be, we definitely uh, plan on getting some upgrades. Considering getting, uh, highly considering getting a better maker master and compressor to pair up with the two, with these two units. So, highly considering that investment and going to remove the uh, TC electronics. I only use this as a limiter as well, I forgot to mention that. 
has a limiter in it. So let me go back. Go back to that. See that show. Yeah, so. So you can change the threshold. It's a peak limiter and a release. I forget what the ratio may be at or whatever. Uh, I think the tack is maybe on 20 milliseconds or 50 automatic. I forget. I have to read the manual again. But it's a pretty dope unit, but I only use it for the, limit, uh, the limiter mostly just to catch the peaks in the beginning of the chain. Sometimes I might use the EQ, but not often. I haven't really been able to, you know, really had to use that. Now, if I need to use an EQ like that, I, I will use the Weiss, the Vice Weiss. You know. So yeah, so I've been actually replacing this using the DS1 as a replacement for this. You know, the, the, uh, the limiter and the EQ as a replacement. I always looked at this EQ as my poor man's wife. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, those are plans for upgrades. Oh, pardon me. Yeah, so, so yeah, removing this, I may remove this to set up a different room, a uh, separate mixing room. I'm thinking about getting, I don't know which way, we, we don't, I don't know which way to go as far as compression. I definitely want to get the Better Maker Master and Compressor, but that's clean, that's a VCA, that's another clean unit. So to match up with that, I'm thinking about maybe getting a tube compressor, maybe a SPL or something of that nature. So I got tube compression and then tube equalization. And over here we got the clean compression and clean EQ. So that's the that's what's in the air right now. I'm trying to it's hard to consider what compressor to get other than the better maker master and compressor. So that's what's you know trying to con be considering that what you know what I'm leaning towards the SPL iron, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. So that's it in a nutshell. I'll be back to discuss what plugins we use in the mastering chain. And there you go.